Hello everybody! Welcome to another Valheim video. Today we're going to look at how much space it takes to have everything you have in an end game base. You know, a base that has one of every single thing you need to make everything, store everything, use everything, have a dock for your boat, you know, all your Valheiming stuff in the end. Well, I figured it would be helpful for you. It'll make it easier for you to figure out how much space you need to build what you're building. To help you better visualize how much space you'll need, I've simplified it. So I've made it so one square is just one tile here. Technically, this is four square meters because this is actually one square meter in the Valheim game world. But the numbers are too confusing. They're four times bigger. It may sound like a lot, but it confused me. So I made it simpler. When you actually build this stuff, you need to put space so you can interact with it, right? You can't just look at how much space the item takes up. You also have to basically double it so that you have runway and walkway to interact with everything. Otherwise, your planning won't really work because you don't account for that you need space to walk through everything. So that's why a lot of these squares you see are a bit bigger than the items that they contain. Let's first get started with the most common areas. The workbench area takes around 10 squares with all of the updates that are currently available as of Hilda's request. The forge is a little bit bigger, takes around 12 squares. This is because some of the upgrades have a bigger radius that stops you from placing them near each other, which makes it take up more space. The Mistlin stuff takes up around 12 squares. You need a little bit extra space because they're gonna add another attachment or two. The kitchen also takes up a similar amount of space, around 12 squares. Keep in mind, in a lot of situations, you'd actually make multiple of certain objects, so you would want more space, but I'm just going to show you the kind of minimum to have everything available. And of course, this is Valheim, so to not include storage is absurd. A storage space could be really big, really small, they can vary a lot, but 9 squares seems pretty appropriate, and as you progress, you can make much better storage options. Now, the living area is very intense. This whole area is quite big. It takes up around 30 squares, and that's, that's assuming you have everything you need, and also, see, there's the barber thing. You need to have a little bit more space, because they're going to obviously add more stuff, they always do. Iron Gate's awesome. If you're playing with other people, then you'd probably end up with more bed space. So, maybe you could assume, like, 40 squares. You could assume that 40 squares is enough to have enough beds for, you know, 4 or 5 people. Especially if you use the smaller beds. Here we have some other items that are just kind of one-offs, right? This is the cartography table, which is quite big. It allows you to car... Getting a wisp is part of progressing through the mistlands, although it's not technically necessary. But you'll have one of these in your base. They're pretty small, and they need to be outside and in the dark. They don't need a roof or anything. There's also the obliterator. This item needs to be by itself, because it's going to really mess things up. You'll get damaged, and a lot of other stuff will get shocked as well. And what's any endgame Valheim base without multiple portals? You know, it's likely you'll have more than four sets of portals, but this is roughly enough space and you can make it bigger. The sewing wheel is around four squares. Each windmill is around nine. The basic forge is around four. The upgraded blast furnace is six. The kiln is nine. And the refinery is eight. In addition to that, there's other things that you need to consider, like your dock. Vaughn is a sailing game in many ways, right? So you're going to be using your boat, so you need a dock, right? A dock is roughly 16 squares. I've also given some space for a cart here. You often find that people will enjoy combining boats and carts. And another factor to consider is farming, because let's be honest, half of Valheim, it seems, especially if you're cooking for other people, is farming and getting all the food that you need to sustain these hungry Vikings. You could really narrow this space down a lot. You don't really need 50 squares. 50 is an approximate number. You could reduce that if you really wanted to. Honestly, as I was making this video, I was pretty dumbfounded by the sheer mass of things that go into a, an endgame base in Valheim. I mean, I've played through a couple times normally, and I, I don't know, because you build it slowly over time, 
it doesn't really feel like you build that much, but just building it for this video, it took a while. You know, and I was, I was just splitting everything. It still took a while. It's awesome. I love Valheim. It's so cool how, I mean, the, the amount of stuff that goes into a base, if you make your base and you put all this stuff in it, there's no way it's going to be the same as someone else. You know, there's just too many different options for where things can go. When I've played Valheim, it's really showed me that games don't have to make me feel depressed. I used to play a lot of World of Warcraft, and what I've found with some of those games is that they just, like, take away from you, you know? But a game like Valheim, it's so creative. Like, it, I, I can play Valheim, and it inspires me, and I do creative things in my life, and it helps me channel that creative energy. It's, it's awesome. It's really beneficial, and it, it's a good game. Like, it's good to me. It treats me good, you know? A game that treats you well, whoa, that's crazy, you know? Oh, come on. And if you want to support my work, then consider getting a dedicated Valheim server. Your friends can join and do stuff with it while you're away and doing other stuff. So when you log back on, well, things have changed. And it really makes the world feel more immersive. Because most Valheim playthroughs, they, they usually last like maybe one month to three months. But most people don't just keep playing Valheim. They'll, they'll play it again in the future, but they're going to stop, take a break do other stuff that's kind of naturally what happens to people so you shouldn't expect that you know oh it's going to be worth if you get a server for six months or a year I, I really encourage you not to do that um, just because you'll probably end up not using it as much as you'd like to so stick with a month or three months and that's pretty much as long as people use it if you leave a comment below about something you want me to make a tutorial about i will make a video just for you I like to respond to comments by making videos because you guys are always able to ask questions that I don't really consider. So comment below and let me know what you think and what you'd like to see more videos about. I'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you next time. Bye!